Now, not everyone is as fortunate as me in having such a well-equipped workshop. We got band saws, we got lathes, we got milling machines, we got welders, but these are all considered exotic machines. But 12 years ago, I never had any of these things either. But I still wanted to make cool stuff, just like I do now. I just wasn't quite sure how to go about it and where to start. So this project is for you people that are in the exact same position as I was. Now, we're gonna make a go-kart, because everyone wants to make go-karts and it's a really fun end product to get to. But I'm not gonna use any of this flash stuff, no. Forget it, bandsaw, welder, not gonna get used. I'm just gonna use real simple stuff which you've probably got in your garden shed already. Yep, let's get cracking. <laughs> Right, gonna need some stuff to make this go-kart. Now, we've got a pit bike engine. I like these, they're nice and small, quite powerful. And uh, we've got some go-kart bits and bobs here, of course. Now then, if you was to buy all this brand new, it would cost you about 600 pounds. How much? which for some people is massively over budget, but if you look secondhand, you can get some of this for quite cheap. Get a secondhand pit bike, and of course you get nearly half of it all taken care of, all the engine chains, sprocket and things like that, and then obviously go-kart bits. There's loads of them on eBay, just go and have a look. Now, if you want to buy these exact bits, I've got this all from a shop called Pit Bike Parts. They know exactly what I have had for this video. Some of it's not on their website, so just give them a call, and then they will be able to you know, tell you what I've had, and if you want it, you can buy it, obviously. Now then, what sort of tools are you going to need for this wonderful project? Well, you're going to need a drill, an angle grinder, that's a must, file to tidy the edges up, collection of spanners that go up to 19mm, a uh, set of allen keys, drill bits obviously, um, and then just like normal things like hammers, screwdrivers and stuff like that, but you, you know, anyone has got a toolkit is going to have all that sort of rubbish. Now, the two things you're probably going to have to get hold of uh, specially is a 20mm metal drill bit and a 25mm biometal hole saw for drilling the, uh, the holes out for the axles. Um, okay, so that's that bit covered. Now the other bits which you potentially don't need, but it would be a lot better, is a set square and a set of clamps. They're just going to make your life a hell of a lot easier. Right, now then, materials. What am going to make this thing out of? Basically, some two inch box section, various different types of flat, flat bar, and a bit of 25 mil, 12, 12, 25 mil angle iron. There we are. Right, that's all the stuff we're going to need. Right, let's get started. set up. Now basically what we've done is we've clamped three bits of box section together. We're just using plates which go on the top. It would be better if you stuck a plate underneath as well, but I'm looking at this through the eyes of a cheapskate who haven't got a lot of metal. Now, a couple of little tips. When you cut the box section, rather than just trying to slice it all in one go, as accuracy is going to help you a lot in this, it's good to mark every edge and then cut them individually and flip them round so you don't wander off. And kind of the same when you're drilling holes as well. Sometimes it's best to mark the top bits of the box section and at the other side so the two holes definitely marry up because like you know humans have a tender of not holding the drill at perfect 90 degree angles and straight down so you can end up with the bottom hole not lining up with the top one and especially if you're going to use two plates that is going to cause you problems. Now then, got a rear axle, the sprocket position is fixed on it so we can't do anything about that. The disc brake which uh, kind of floats around on a bit of a keyway sits in just there that's going to work out nicely Next thing we need to do is the front axle. Now the rear axle just sticks straight out, but that's not the case on the front, because the, uh, the little stubby steering axles are kind of sat on an angle. I don't know if you can see that on the camera very well. Now if we was to put it on a straight bit, the front wheel would end up being all wonky like that, which would look a little bit rubbish. So we've got to kind of bend our frame up, which straightens the wheel back out. But it doesn't matter, I've got a plan. Try.
main part of the chassis done. Now this little bit across the front here, we basically cut some big chunks out of the 2x2 two two box section, angled one of the uh, sides of the cut so we could bend it up and then obviously that meets the angles that the front wheels sit at. And then we put these little plates across here to kind of bridge the gap and give it a bit of extra strength. And as you can see, there's no flex in it or anything like that. It's pretty good. Now, also, I chopped out these little slots here. And as well as that allowing the actual wheel to turn, because the thing would foul it, it also acts as like a steering stop. So you can't like cross everything over and get it all in a big bit of mess. Now, these bits stick out here because I'm probably going to stick a bar across the front here. So if I hit anything, the wheels don't take it in all the steering system. But I think the next job is to uh, mount the engine. Now, most DIY go-karts kind of use those like lawnmower derived engines. And they sit kind of just above the axle, which is great because there's plenty of space around here. The chain drive comes uh, straight off them, straight onto the axle. They've got a little auto clutch in them. Everything's good. But they're not that powerful. They sound like lawn mowers and they've got no gears. So, as you know, I like using these pit bike engines. But there's a reason for that. They're pretty cheap. They've got a reasonable amount of power. And they also come in a few configurations. Now, this one is a semi-auto one, which basically means it's got four gears, but there's no clutch. The clutch is activated on the gear lever. So as you push the gear lever, it kind of depresses the clutch and then whacks the gear in on like the kind of the latter stage of that. Now then, as far as mounting it, it's a little bit different to the lawnmower ones because it can't sit exactly above the axle. But there is a solution. So what we're going to do, we're going to stick some bars. There's some little mounting points under here. There's four mounting points. We're going to stick a bar across there and then another bar down here which can come off these fixing points at the side here and then we're going to sit it as far back as possible so it is nearly going to be above the axle but only the sprocket most of the engine will kind of sit a bit further forward but you know I think it's a better option so we're going to sit that kind of up there I've got the little bar things here now because these are quite powerful and I've got a fair amount of torque I've had to strengthen the bar with a little plate on the side so it gives it an angle because I've kind of built this before as a little test to see if everything could work and, uh, and on full rev this actually bent because the engine wanted to pull itself down towards the sprocket. So as you can imagine that's going to sit in there like that and then we'll get another bit which will sit near the front and then this is going to sit right here just above the sprocket as close to it as possible. That one will go there and then the chain will obviously go straight down. And then the great thing about this is if you want to tension the chain, we haven't got to make any con uh, complex slidey system. All you do is just lift these bars up. So basically just put washers and packers and stuff underneath it. And then that will tighten the chain up. So, better get on with that because I think that is a wonderful solution. And we still haven't used a welder. Nope, not even thought about it. This video is about 10 minutes, so I'd say that's enough for part one. We've got a nice solid engine, we've got a nice solid frame. Jobs to do, obviously finish it off. Steering, brakes, accelerator, fuel, electrics, all that malarkey. But I've had a word with mum and she said we're doing all right. See you in the next part. Look, it's good. See, I'd say. <laughs>